Practice 1. Creating a 2D Sofa In the previous lessons, we've learned how to use some AutoCAD commands to create basic 2D elements like lines, polylines, and rectangles. We also learned how to modify these elements. Once we understand how to use these commands, we can use our skills to create bigger projects, such as architectural floor plans, or house furniture, or mechanical parts. Let's start doing that by creating a 2D sofa and practice the commands we learned. For this small project, we will need most of the skills we've practiced previously. Let's start our first bigger practice project by drawing a piece of furniture for the house. A sofa, for example. The sofa we want to design will look similar to this. Practice. Let's get started. First, open the practice file acad1.practice01-sofa. Then, from the ribbon or the command line, run the line command. Then, with ortho mode and OSnap center activated, click on the start point, the magenta circle in square 1. This will allow us to click in the center of the circle and lock the cursor movement to only the horizontal and vertical directions. Slide the cursors to the right and enter 2000 in millimeters, 80 inches. This will create the first line of the sofa. Next, Slide the cursor upward and enter 700, 30 inches. Then press Enter. This creates the right edge of the sofa. Now, move the cursor to the left and type 2000. Then press Enter to create the front edge of the sofa. After that, with OSnap End activated, Click on the start point to create a rectangle. Now, press Escape to exit the line command. You may be asking yourself, why not use the rectangle command we just learned in the previous lesson? Well, of course, we can do that. Instead, let's use the rectangle command to create the sofa's armrests. Run the rectangle command from the ribbon or command line. When prompted to specify the first corner point, click on the lower left corner of the sofa. Then, when prompted for the other corner, click on Dimension or enter the shortcut D at the command line. For the length, enter 150 and press Enter. For the width, enter 500 and press Enter. Now, we are given an option to insert the rectangle in one of the four quadrants of an imaginary circle centered at the start point. Choose the top right quadrant and click. After that, with the OSnap midpoint activated, use the Move command to move the armrest from the midpoint of its lower edge to the lower left corner of the sofa. Then, click to adjust the armrest. Now, let's see how to use the grips of AutoCAD objects. It is intuitive that we can select almost any object and move a grip by selecting it and manually moving it. Furthermore, this applies also to segments. Suppose that we want to make the armrest 75 millimeters, 3 inches, closer to the front edge of the sofa. Select the armrest. Then, Click on the midpoint of the top edge. Then, move it upward and type 75 millimeters, 3 inches, at the command line. The armrest now extends closer to the front of the segment. Now, let's create the headrest. To do that, we can either copy the bottom edge and move it, say 200 millimeters, 8 inches, or create an offset. Let's use the Offset option to create a copy of the bottom edge of the headrest. Subsequently, with the OSnap Intersection activated and Ortho Mode deactivated, 
Run a line from the lower left corner of the armrest to the intersection of the top of the headrest and the right of the armrest lines. Now, let's practice the trim command. Run it from the ribbon or the command line. Then, make a rectangular selection to select all the objects of the sofa. When prompted to trim, click to trim the following object. The top part of the middle vertical line of the armrest, the bottom part of the right line of the armrest, and the left part of the top headrest line. The sofa should look like this after trimming the unnecessary parts. After that, we need to delete the part of the lower line of the armrest extending past the vertical middle line. We can't use the erase command because the armrest is one entity. We used a rectangle to create it. Deleting one part will delete the whole thing. So we have a couple of options. The first option would be to explode the rectangle and delete the extra line. To do this, run the explode command from the ribbon or at the command line, alias X. The sofa should look like this when we are done. Now, we need to mirror the left armrest to the right. First, we need an axis for the mirror. Draw a line or polyline from the middle of the top line of the sofa to the bottom line of the headrest. Make sure the O snap perpendicular option is activated. Then, Trim and delete all the right parts of the mirror axis. Next, run the mirror command and select all the parts to the right with a rectangular selection and press enter. For the first point, click on the lower or upper end of the mirror axis. For the second point, click on the other end. For the option to erase the source objects, press Enter to choose No. The mirror image is now created. Next, erase the mirror axis by selecting it and running the Erase command or hitting the Delete key. Subsequently, we need to join the horizontal lines of the sofa. This step is not really required, but let's use this opportunity to practice the join command. If you click on individual lines, you will notice that the top line of the sofa is made up of two independent polylines. Run the join command. Now, Assume that our sofa is required to have three seats of 700 millimeters, 30 inches. Therefore, we need a total length of 2,100 millimeters, 90 inches. Since we have created a sofa that is 2,000 millimeters, 80 inches, we need to extend it. One easy way to do that is to use the scale command. After running the scale command, Make a rectangular selection to select all objects. After that, press Enter. For the base point, click on the start point of the sofa, center of the circle. When prompted for a scale factor, you can do the math and divide 2100 by 2000, 90 by 80, and enter the result. Or, you can spare yourself the math headache and choose the reference option. If you choose that option, then simply click on reference at the command line or type the shortcut R. Subsequently, when prompted for the reference length, measure the width of the sofa by clicking on one extremity of the top horizontal line, then on the opposite side one. When prompted for the new length, Type 2100, 90, and press Enter. The sofa is now scaled. Now, let's create the outlines of the seat. 
select one of the top vertical lines and offset it 700 millimeters, 30 inches. The new line should look like this. Now use the extend command to extend it down to the top of the headrest. The left seat limit is now created. After that, let's offset the seat limit line to the right 700 millimeters, 30 inches. Subsequently, delete the two reference circles. Finally, let's create a block of our sofa so that we can insert it on multiple floors, in a basement, or any other room as required. Run the block command from the ribbon or the command line. In the block definition dialog box, enter sofa full for the name. Click on the pick point icon to select a base point for the block. Next, Click on the lower left corner of the sofa. Then, for Object, click Select Objects. Make a rectangular selection to select all objects. Press Enter to return to the Block Definition dialog box. Then, for the Block Conversion option, choose to Convert to Block. Finally, click OK to create the block. The block is now created and can be inserted anywhere in the Drawing from the Insert tab. This concludes this first exercise where we practice how to use commands such as line, polyline, circle, rectangle, copy, mirror, scale, erase, extend, trim, block, etc. The next step of our journey to learn AutoCAD is more practice to learn new features and keep strengthening our skills.